course, all the days I chose to do this, it was a hot day in Daly City. It's usually shitty here, but it's hot. So I'm baking in the back of this nasty 240. Really probably should have just vacuumed and cleaned it first, but I told myself, no, the one is their priority. So here I am, sitting in someone's filth. I don't know, probably drug paraphernalia, who knows? Got Damp Raid, shout out to Damp Raid. If you guys have like musty houses or like your car just has moisture inside, like they tell you to put like socks with kitty litter at your windows, like your windshield or like those silica packets, but really Damp Raid's the MVP. I used to work at Bed Bath & Beyond. We unloaded tons of these. Have one in my room, I keep it in my cars. When they're like really muggy and gross and just moist. Um, moist, haha. <laughs> Anyways, the trunk of the 240 actually has a giant pool of water, we'll show you that later, but this has all been absorbed in the last few weeks by just sitting in my car, and it's just been sitting in the garage, so that's a pro tip for you guys if you find your car just feeling wet inside and you know there's moisture and you can't get it out, this is a way to do it, and it, it leaves a nice fresh scent too. Uh, got, the gold, got the old garbage can prop in the door so I don't completely bake to death in here, and I'm probably actually going to open that door so I get a cross flow of air. But, as far as this window goes, I didn't look up anything, and Jerry's done this before. I'm just kind of going in solo. So we're gonna go do a razor blade, hopefully not scratch the window too bad. And some Goo Gone, which we clearly use a lot of. I'm actually gonna start with the side window to practice so I don't mess up the back window too bad. Luckily the blade was able to get under some of this fairly easily. I don't know how the back window's gonna be, because it's not as torn up as this one was. So I'll show you guys when it's mostly done. It's not working so well. So instead of trying to be Mr. Know-it-all, I decided to look up on eHow, WikiHow, and they suggested a few ways, but I think the easiest one is steamer. So we have this nice Rowenta one. If you guys don't know, Rowenta is a really good brand, mostly German-made stuff. Anyways, we have this Rowenta steamer, and I'm gonna give that a shot see how that goes. Ideally it's supposed to just supposed to just heat it on there, steam it, and it should just peel off on like one nice piece. Um, that would be really really nice. So let's see how that goes. So yeah, steamer was a fail. Probably didn't have a strong enough steamer. But the main principle behind the steamer, which all we got was this little pocket, completely useless, and I tried to spray goo off and made things worse. But it seems like the main concept is heat, and heat will melt the glue, so why not a heat gun? Here's our heat gun. Something on the internet said a heat gun would work too, after I double checked. It said to do like the heat gun in circular motions on the outside, until you get a corner, after you melt all the glue, then you should be able to peel it. Um, I highly doubt that's gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. At least heat gunning this corner right here, and seeing whether or not like at least get like a good portion of this up so I can start chipping away at it because there's no way in hell I'm going to do all these little razor blade chips all the way down this corner. I can't reach it. The best thing I can do is just peel it if I can get under it. So, let's see if we can do that. Okay, so I tried the heat gun. Helped a little bit. Raylene's going to do the heat gun now while I'm on the inside scraping. I'm also spraying ammonia first, or Windex. And it has a low boiling point, and when it gets in the bubbles, it starts to boil. And it makes it easier to peel it off, kind of, I don't know. Still just making little dents in this, maybe I just need to be patient, there's no easy solution. But I'm gonna not be in the car while she's heating it, just so I don't die from ammonia gases. Uh, but yeah, let's give it a shot. Really can go ahead and hit it. You have to go like full power and like not in one spot for too long, just kind of, yeah, like get close and eventually you'll start seeing a bubble, actually. Spring ammonia, having Raylene do the heat gun, that combo was able to get me a couple big pieces, but still it was only the first layer of the vinyl, so we didn't get to see clear windshield. But I think this combo of having heat on the other side and spring goo off and razoring to the one area that is completely clear will give me some space to just chip away like that instead of doing this double ear BS. I don't know if you can see it, sorry. It's hard to do this with one hand in a DSLR. But yeah, 
We're just gonna keep slow and steady wins the race. We decided to go one of these little bars at a time, half a bar at a time. It fits the razor nicely, so it's kind of easy to scrape. You do start scraping some of the defroster stuff off, like the black part on the inside. I don't know if that affects usability or not. Frankly, I don't give a damn because my defroster doesn't work anyway, so scrape away. And this hurts my wrist and my fingers, so tagged out. My girlfriend's doing it. Look at that, diligently work. Little update, it's been maybe 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, girlfriend's got a lot more patience than I do. She's doing real good here. Taking these big old chunks off, she's probably got maybe two more extra lines than I've done. So I can see when I'm not needed. This is a woman's job. Not just saying that, not actually being sexist, just joking. But she's doing way better than I am. So, uh, divide and conquer. It's gonna wait for Jur for this one. But it looks like I'm just gonna do it myself until he gets back. And that is, peel this crap and at least get goo off on this and start scraping it off too. But I can see where the carbon fiber was starting to split, I guess. It's not as bad as I thought it was. Sorry, I don't think it's gonna focus. It's too damn close. But yeah, it's just barely splitting right here. Um, but yeah, we'll glue that up. Probably end up just like, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll find out. First things first, get this crap tape off and get all the residue off. Just ripped most of the tape off. It, I don't even know what they used. That wasn't duct tape. It was something super sticky. It just completely ripped the gloves out of my hand. Never had a, a tape that sticky in my life. I really want to know what to use. Maybe Gorilla Tape. But you can see how nice at one point the carbon fiber was. That. How it is now. How it used to be. Nice. There's nothing nice on this car except this one little black part of carbon fiber. So maybe we can get the rest of it looking like that. Or we could be lazy and paint it. But I think I'm gonna give it a shot. What do they say, like, get an orbital sander, DA sander, sand it, dry sand it at like 800,000 grit, and then re-clear it? I don't know, I'd be able to handle that. Oh, and we're definitely getting rid of these craptastic Pep Boy Special freaking hood pin latches. We're gonna go with those, apparently Pandy has to install arrow catch latches, arrow catch style latches that Reg got and was complaining so much about installing. And uh, it'll be a lot better than these, because these don't even really hold down the hood. <laughs> Especially considering the pins that we use are homemade coat hangers that we just kind of bent. Yeah, real janky. So that'll be another video, because I just ordered them yesterday. Oh, and the headlights, yeah, I know, they're garbage. We're gonna polish those out too. And Raylene's still chipping away. Chip, 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 chip. Any thoughts? Yeah, it's like working in a greenhouse that smells like dugon, <laughs> so it smells like oranges and death because there's ammonia too. Got a little bit of smell Mine smelled going. like crayons. Yeah, oh, this yeah, this stuff smells like ass by itself. Yeah. <laughs> it smelled, dude, this one smelled like literal shit. I thought it was from the garbage can, like holding up the door. Yeah. But no, it smells so bad. I was gonna clean first, but I was like, no, nah, windows are priority, and I'm glad I didn't because yeah, I would've been so been, pissed. If you clean it, if I clean, I didn't because I didn't realize it was gonna be this much yeah. of a pain in the ass. This is like a war zone in here. Yeah. <laughs> this is step one of 240 ownership. Get in these back seats and trying to do this shit. <laughs> Not for me! I just I'll let you guys get back to that. Ow. And what I am doing is cleaning the garage because after the drift event, I kind of just threw everything in the garage and went to sleep. But got to do some organizing. Um, a lot of these parts are going to disappear soon because we're going to be installing them on Anthony's car and my car. So. Um, the garage is gonna empty out soon, so it still looks a mess, but we'll get there. And it is now May, which means a lot of things are gonna happen. The transmission is going to be swapped. We are just waiting on the clutch to come in. Um, he's gonna use my flywheel for, that I used um, on my 240. He's probably just gonna get a resurface, but we have the trans, cross member, master and slave cylinders. He also has 300 ZX brakes that he picked up from Rob. Shout out to Rob. Um, so those are also going to be going on. He has brake pads already. He has a welded diff chilling right there. As you guys know, he has the PBM coils and an ISR short shifter. We still have to change out the other tension rod. I guess we still haven't done that. We've just been super busy. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys stay tuned. 
like I said, I'm going to be making a playlist with all the build videos, so make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe for more updates. This isn't the end of the video, but I just want to make sure you guys stay tuned because S14 is going to come along and it's going to be quick. So this is the perks of living on a hill in a windy street. Just about every day there's all this crap in our driveway, just a bunch of litter, leaves, and junk. And it always gets blown into our garage and makes our garage a mess, so... Pretty good, I might just try to stop it at this line because you can't even tell. And I can't actually reach beyond that, but you won't even good. know. Yeah, looks good. I just need to clean up the top edges. Really? Just there, but yeah. I guess if they see the beginning of the video, they'll see how... Look at all that crap. Now we can just spray some VHT nightshade. That's stupid. Outside tent. But yeah, go get anything to do fitment. Stunning hella hard. So, we did it, kind of, ish. Dirt left, for anybody wondering. Uh, but look at that. That is, that is great. You can see through that now. In fact, you can see through the outside inside, inside outside. Look at that. So it only took all of today. I would say this took multiple hours and a lot of patience and inhaling a lot of cellophane and chemicals and tint. But uh, yeah, we tried a few methods. We tried the steaming, we tried the heat gun. Uh, the heat gun was good to get the first layer of cellophane off, but once we got a big chunk of it off, it was just patience and just chipping away at it. Uh, the only downside to this now is, is down here, which we knew we were gonna have. Because we can't really get down here. The speaker gets in the way of our hands and the blades are just so tiny. So I might pick up like the paint scraper, a metal paint scraper and see if we can't, uh, if we can't just chip that away. But for now, it's good. I can drive it in the aspect of seeing out the back. What are you doing, babe? Soaking up the water that's in the corners. This is our bonus footage right now. I don't think they can see it, but that, you can see where the water line is. Kind of where the shadow is in the video. That's where it used to be filled up to water. It's gonna drill a hole for a drain hole, but I'm just soaking it up with these rags right now. Ew, it's really gross actually. It's kinda, kinda shitty. That's why the car smelled like ass when we got it. <laughs> all right, let these rags sit a little longer. And that's, yeah. that's all we're gonna do for right now, cause, yeah. I don't Ooh, know. that smells. Is it? I can't smell it with a stuffy nose. No, yeah, it smells. Oh, oof. Ugh, you that smell that? Holy shit. <laughs> See if we can get in here. There you go. Yeah. There's the gold. Stuff the uh, good old damp right here that I told our five viewers all about and the benefits of it. And this is where it comes in handy. Just hook it onto something. I don't know. Wiring harness sounds like a terrible idea. Let's just go onto that. Yeah, well, that ought to absorb as much of that nasty, musty moisture and garbage. There is the hood. Didn't make any progress on that. That took a lot longer than I thought, so... I tried to scrape as much of this crap off as possible. We ran out of goo off, and there's just some really stuck on gunk, so we had to buy some more goo off. Yeah, but that that's today's video, I think. Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll clean the inside. Maybe take care of the rest of that. Uh, but yeah, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends who have 240s about our channel. You know, just a couple guys living in the city trying to work on drift cars, wasting money, wasting time. Brian Little. <laughs>